jump. Yeah, Good morning. We we'll get started with our workshop um, in preparation of the October 9th meeting. 
Madam Clerk, roll call. Mr. Kinsley-Mason. Here. Mr. Malloy. Here. Mr. Okay, does anybody in the room have anything that needs to go first? Anyone have prior commitments, engagements? Speak now or wait till the end of the meeting? If you're not, you're Go ahead, sir. Hi. Um, as always, if you're going to talk, we do have a new microphone system, so you don't need to hold the mic, but please approach the table, Lee, so we can make sure we double catch you in case there's right. any snags. And uh, who you are and Mike who you are. Good to see Mike. How you doing? I'm Mike. It's can't wait, so I'll introduce oh, myself sure. to you. Yeah, I was appointed uh, township trustee back in May, and I haven't come down to see you guys. You know where we got fiscal emergency. I haven't come down because Vianna's problem, not Trumbull County's problem, to be honest with you. So, but we do need, we purchased an ambulance back in 2021. It got delivered late 2023. And we didn't have any funds to pay for. But we're coming down underneath the American Rescue Plan infrastructure project application to put in for the ambulance if we can get some funding for it. anything that's available from the county through the ARC funds to recoup some of that cost and help us pay for that. And then that'll ultimately help us get out of physical emergency quarter here. Now we have, to be honest with you, we're $1.3 million in a hole. As public knowledge, we're down well below 900,000 now, almost close to 800,000, depending on how the reconciliation play out. So we're making dents in that. We're getting down there. This help would get us out sooner than later. Now, who I give this to, well, we filled it out. Mr. Haygood, he can attest to when we put in for the ambulance, whenever it's purchased, what we have. So now, the problem with the ambulance is it's a newer one. It's on a 2023 chassis. And I didn't know this until I came in there. I started talking with firemen. They don't have a long life cycle. But we have some, but they have 12, 15 year life cycle before these things go. So, on one hand, we could return the ambulance. But by the time we return it and pay the restocking fee, essentially, it's going to cost us forty, fifty thousand dollars, and when we get out of fiscal emergency in three or four years, if we you know potentially, we're going to need to purchase a new ambulance, and the cost on that could be 20, 30, 40 percent higher than if we have one now and we get it in service. So, it'd be cost savings to us if we just keep this one, bite the bullet, get it paid for. Here, here's, here's my concern, and I don't know if this is. Um, you know, this is a question for our legal counsel that we've retained, but if an asset is already purchased, going back and sort of reimbursing that, I don't know if that's allowable under the federal rules and guidelines. I, I'm just being I'm completely you, transparent. And, and it, had, it was not purchased. Oh, there was no oh I thought you purchased it. It was, it was ordered. Oh, I see. I see. I thought you purchased it. There was no payments on it right now. I mean, it's it's literally in lingo. And the guy we purchased it okay. from, He's like, yeah, we'll work on financing. We'll do something. He goes, I understand that he understands the situation we're in. So I don't, and I can't speak to what happened as far as trustee no, and no. how it was purchased without somebody being like, hey, give me a purchase order. Give me a down payment. Give me no. something. There, there was none of that. It's like, it's literally just, here's your new vehicle. If I can speak a little bit yeah. on it. Mike, hey, goodbye to the fire department. I'm the assistant chief there. This was a three year process, okay? We ordered the ambulance, okay? And uh, they had to wait for a chassis. Almost took a year and a half to get the chassis, okay? After the end of the three years, the beginning of this year, they uh, delivered the ambulance to us, okay? We, they accepted the ambulance, okay? But then the bottom fell out. We had no money. So then, uh, this is the third ambulance that we have bought off of this gentleman and company. So we were in contact with him and he's like, well, uh, you know, I'll work with you. You know, you guys have bought ambulances off of us before and everything. So he said, just leave it there. Let, it, let me know what's going on everything. So we started a, a, a fund, a donation fund at the bank in Vienna. So anybody wants to donate. 
we're writing letters to all the businesses, which will go out in a week or two, to see if anybody is able to donate something to it. Um, like he said, if, if this ambulance goes away, then I don't know where we're going to be because uh, it's going to be a 20, 30, 40%, and it's, it's going to be a wait time. And the, the two ambulances we have now, they're just wore out. They're tired. Um, we're, we're trying to get this going as quick as we can to, uh, to, to keep our service up. Right now, we're limited because we went from volunteers to part-time to full-time staff, six guys, uh, four people on duty and everything, down to nothing down to just all the volunteers. And we only have a handful of volunteers. So the surrounding departments, Holland, Liberty, uh, Fowler, Hub, we even had Hubbard come in with their ambulance because we just can't can't get ours out right now. But um, we, you know, anything, anything, any amount would, would help us out. There's been nothing paid on it yet. Okay. Um, so um, so that, that that's where we're at. Well, I, I wouldn't have an issue with submitting an application to the board and, and us taking a look at it, forwarding it over to our legal, right. making sure if it's allowable. Obviously, we've done this with other communities. Um, you know, we, we'd love to help. I know you guys are in dire need right. out there. It's a public health and safety issue for sure. Well, we probably should have came sooner, but it, it just didn't happen. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't even know why. I, I, yeah, that's Mike wasn't there. Too many issues. It just yeah. all went down. Don't know why it wasn't submitted sooner, but you can uh, see it to our clerk and then she gets submitted over to the right. Thank you. All right. Thank you both. And I guess that's my thoughts too is you know, we you, right, you oh, you're like our fourth commissioner, you know yeah, exactly know. what we go through here, right. even every single meeting. Right. Um, so you know where we stand with the stuff, you know yes. how much we've given out to different departments. Viana has received at least yes. three different grants that I know of more, probably more individual. <laughs> request in that township than any other township. Um, the last thing we got them was we bought Mark's radios for the police department and the police department disbanded. So you know, we got that in limbo too with all these radios that we bought. Well, that sitting there. well with the numbers of radios we bought, you're not at the capacity of yes. the radios we bought. Um, so um, you know it's something we're gonna have to throw in the pipeline. You know what I'd say is Put it in, put it into the maybe like we did with the other ones. And then when we have our big meeting to address all the other ones that are out there, you know, in fairness to all the other townships and all the other entities that applied, we have to consider it equally with them and not jump some of the front just because they're in fiscal emergency. No. We understand that. There's nothing personal. It's just there's a lot of wants out there, and we want to stretch it as far as we can to make sure, especially if we take care of the ones that got nothing first. Right. Right. Before we take care of ones that have already received some. I understand. No, that's just me being honest with my opinion. No, I understand. But but I will say that this is because of the situation here, it's unique to Viana and unique to the commissioners. That if there is going to be a hiccup in, in public safety, I think we need to at least look at that a little cl closer than maybe some of the others. You know what I mean? Sure. We public don't safety is definitely going to go to you know, understand it all. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand that. That's why. And I and I understand that that's why I haven't been out here, you know, say hat in hand. I know, you know, yeah. it, it's our issue. We gotta clean it up. And we appreciate you it's being here, Mike. You got a you got a tall order ahead of you, got big shoes or a big task coming in the way that you did. So I feel for you that, uh, and thank you for stepping up and volunteering to do what you do because nobody really wants to jump into a frying pan like that, but you did. Uh, you know, that shows stuff of your character. So we're glad you're here. I appreciate that. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Anybody else have anything? No bill things. Good morning. You entertain item number 37. Okay, let's go to number 37, if we could. Oh, we got uh chief panel up or administrator panel up, sorry. Uh, number 37. I thought if we entertain moving that forward, I can get back to the township. Yep, we'll go ahead and do this right now. And that's to adopt a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of Trumbull County, Ernie Bonnet's Journal, the filing of a petition for annexation seeking annex 7.9 acres of land, also known as 3942 Youngstown Road in Holland Township in the city of Warren, and further known as being Section 40. Uh, the Holland Township being Township Number 4 in the third range of townships. Connecticut Western Reserve and a further legal description of the perimeter of the map 
Well, that territory proposed to be annexed to the Trumbull County Engineers. Um, it was filed October 7th, 2024, be an expedited type two annexation. Okay, why and where and what are the details behind that? Um, once again, for the record, my name is James Powell, and Howell Township Administrator. On behalf of Powell Township, uh, we firmly oppose this resolution or for the consideration. This uh, 3942 Youngstown Road is a life storage facility. Um, they have been in operation for many years in the township. Um, they were an existing business that went through a remodel and expansion. Um, they had city services, they had water, they had sewer. They were functioning without flaw. Um, for some reason, we're bringing to light the question of why all of a sudden, since they were an existing business that was functioning properly, with water, with sewer, utilities, um, we'd like to gain some further understanding of why this is being, uh, uh, why the annexation has come to the table all of a sudden. Uh, since they're an existing business, we're familiar with the ordinance uh, of Warren City um, with respect to those that are gaining utilities from the city. Um, when they apply for the tap, um, they're being requested to apply for the annexation. However, within that ordinance, I apologize that due to a late notification of this, um, I do not have that ordinance, but within the ordinance, it states as an existing business, um, they're pretty much exempt from annexation. So our question is, is we'd like to see a little bit of research done with this situation and why this is different than any other annexation. Uh, this is not a new project. It's been there. It's been functioning for a lot of work with the fire department, uh, zoning as well, uh, as far as water retention, all of those items in there. So we'd like to uh, just have you take a few extra minutes and think about it um, and really gather the information on why this is happening. I understand there's an ORC code. It's got to follow its proper methodologies. Come to the commissioners. We'll get the letters. Um, I'd like to this is all new to me. It's first I've seen it, and uh, apparently they just filed this. Um, and they didn't reach out to you guys first. They didn't attend a township meeting. So this has actually been going on for a year. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure of the dates offhand. I have a timeline built out, but I believe it was last year in September. Um, while wearing my other hat as fire chief of the township, they were uh, expanding their life storage facility and they needed to do a tap in for a fire. Um, they already had water, and once again, they already had sewer. But the tap in for the water line basically promulgated the question of annexation because they had to get services. It's again, they're existing. So they applied for annexation for type two expedited. Um, it was withdrawn in October of last year. And I think you all had it on your docket for December. Um, so it was withdrawn as a type two annexation. There were a couple of hiccups in the paperwork at that time. So um, it then went dormant for a while. About two months ago, um, this legal group representing us this uh, Law and Associates or something of that nature, which is Natalie Petitioner works with her, introduced language to Warren City that they were going to repetition for type two annexation to um, That was a hiccup because as you know, by our advice code, it must come to you all first um, and not to the city. They've got some cleanup on their side. So this has kind of been going on for about a year. Uh, when I reached out and asked them, hey, you've been an existing business in the township with services for many years, you know, what's going on? Well, due to utilities, we basically need to annex in. And uh, so... Is it a matter of the outside rate as opposed to the inside rate? Is that what the... I mean, there is an inside rate, outside rate, absolutely. Um, if you are inside the system, there right. is a reduction in that. Um, but we're also talking about a storage facility with maybe three of them. Um, we're also talking about, you know, scan 
I understand dollars and cents. Income taxes is pretty much three or four, but in 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 city versus out city, there is a change in that. Yeah. However, based on what my knowledge is, this was well, you're going to have to annex in to get the utilities, but the ordinance clearly states that if you were an existing group, there's no reason for it. It's not. This it seems to be a forced annexation in some way. Well, the, the, the way I understand it, Bill's here, but, and I don't want to put Bill on the spot and give legal advice, but um, we do have to receive the the petition for annexation. It's correct. Kind of, by a certain time limit, is that correct? Mm -hmm. and, so, and again, this one is one I will give a fair warning. It's one that we have a conflict in because okay. we represent the commissioners and Howland Township. Um, but yes, it, it, then generally annexations have to at least be accepted and entered onto the journal at the next regular meeting. And I'm just seeing the our budget code is within five days, so it's not like something we can push back as That's far correct. as as far as receiving, as far as looking it over and making correct. Decisions. And I'm here today yeah. to just inform you, and let you know that we're in opposition of it because we feel this was an existing business, but we're also familiar with the fact the RC there is a process and it has to do process, and this is the first step in that process. Yeah. And yeah. commissioners, um, I just want to let you know that Attorney Burley is, he still remains the legal counsel. That's yeah. Because it's been on and in the has, past, withdrawn. And this is nobody but that business. Correct. No residents, no, it's not going to affect any other neighbors. It's just that Correct. business. Just that life storage business. So I, I am familiar with the process, and this is kind of the first yeah. step. But I want to be here to state our position on it in the opposition and understand the reason why it should follow the process. We'll get a letter within five days as well. But um, just to know this was an existing business. We're kind of concerned yeah. about why all of a sudden has this prompted. We want to be good collaborators with all entities around us. As you can hear, we're good collaborators with Viana providing EMS in their, in their situation right now. Um, and just <coughs> so I, I just want to. Do you know, is, is, is Warren addressed this at all, or is this something they're doing and Warren, does Warren even know? Is Warren uh, I've asking had several, to receive them? I've had several conversations with the mayor. Um, it is at their legal at this point in time. Um, as per the process, as Commissioner uh, Lisa said, this is the first step in that process in notifying you all. The next step will be letters to each of the entities in five days as per the RC. Um, it, it was addressed by the city by a resolution, however, they had to readjust that because it was the cart before the horse process. This has to come first right. by ORC. Right. I, and I thought, uh, that, I thought when that happened, I, I was under the impression that the city and the township had discussed and that it was a done, it wasn't going to happen. So this is news to me that it was refiled. And, uh, it was, I, you know. Those are informal talks, and, that, and I'm correct, not saying correct. And we, I've had several conversations with the mayor, talked about it, and obviously, when when the uh, a type two, an expedited type two, although it has the annexation term attached to it, um, it is kind of a collaboration effort because yes. the property taxes and the borders remain within Howard Township, um, but yet the the city takes advantage of the opportunity of the income tax and those rates are there. However, with this one, the difference is in the facility, we're just kind of questioning about it. is this going to be a new pattern uh, moving forward, which really, which really hurts collaborative efforts. You know, it puts a little, um, little, little kink in things. You know, it's kind of like you know, we we want to come to the table and work together on these things. And just want you to look at this as the process goes forward, ask questions, um, and if there's anything else I can answer, sir. Yeah. And as you know, this has reared its head before. Crumble County and similar instances. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a hindrance on our townships, and we certainly understand that, but um, we will definitely take a look at it. But in the meantime, we have to follow, obviously. Absolutely. I appreciate you. you taking time to look through it as, For sure. the, uh, as it walks through the steps. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll start back at the beginning then. You sure can. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, item 23. We could talk about that. Um, I'm Marilyn Tate from Trumbull County Children's Services. This is a reappointment of Trudy Seymour, who is here mm -hmm. to, as the county prevention specialist for um, the Children's Trust Fund, Ohio Children's Trust Fund. 
most of our committees don't require a commission or appointment, but this one does. So I didn't know if there were any questions um, about it that you might ask since it's so unusual. Did anyone else apply or was it open for people to apply or put out there for accepting applications for the board seat? Um, we've always, just because we're the um, child welfare agency, we always put someone up for that appointment. Trudy was put up two years ago. She can only serve a total of four years. Each appointment is for two years. So um, hers would be a reappointment, and then we would have to nominate someone else to come before you. I'm not sure whether or not. Speak uh, on a committee. I'll refer to the director and the, and the board. And, uh, she, she's obviously been in this position. Yes, for two years. For two yes. years now. Just, just re upping her. Yes, one more appointment to me. She, uh, and she's Captain. served well in that position. Yes, so there's no need for a change. And, no, no. Do you have any questions? Do you want to add anything? or? Uh, no, I'm on the prevention plan uh, work group. Uh, they changed from uh, yearly budget to two years to allow the people who receive the RFPs to provide the service for two years on uninterrupted. Okay. Uh, my credentials, I'm an LSW, um, uh, licensed social worker for the state of Ohio, um, adoption supervisor for financial services. Certainly have all the credentials. Uh, I don't have an issue with it. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Okay, back to the agenda. Uh, number one, there was the minutes. Two the minutes for the special uh, meeting we had regarding Lemisburg Dam. Three approve the bills. Four transfer money sanitary engineer. Uh, Bob Myrano, sanitary engineers. Um, this is a transfer from our project reserve fund to a Scoville sewer project in the amount of Number five again. Additional appropriations. They're also sanitary, so you don't need to do this. Um, we have two of those. The first one is for eighteen thousand dollars. It's an increase in our water uh, rental deposit refunds account, and the second one is related to the additional appropriation. It's five thousand dollars for the Scoville OWBA loan. Okay, approved transfer money for the appropriations. This is the auditor's office. Uh, first, we have our children's services board. The first one we have is $70,000 in the 12. This is an increase in various costs, including screening exams, daycare, drug screening, food, and utilities. Their second one is $190,000 in their capital project fund, 422. Mm -hmm. This is to upgrade the caseworker work area due to a change in capital assets policy. It originally uh, appropriated this in a capital asset account. But as we change the threshold on that, they're going to uh, pay for it out of a different object called a different asset program. Um, the third one is the coroner's office, $540 in the general fund to the hazardous waste disposal. Uh, Court of Appeals, $21,000 in the general fund. This is an increase in costs associated with public defender and computer equipment. Law library, $3,500 in their fund spent fund. The increase in costs associated with Computer equipment and refreshments. Uh, two planning commission ones. The first one is $2,329.57 in the general fund. It's the office supplies and the humidifier. The second planning commission is $3,650 in their fund 225. And this is due to an engineering change order for the GPD contract. Uh, two probates. The first probate is $100 in the general fund. That's an increase in costs associated with operation supplies. Second probate is $500, also at the general fund, and an increase in costs associated with office supplies. Uh, two prosecutors, the first one is $600 in the general fund. That's an increase in costs associated with operation supplies in their victim fitness division. And the second one is $7,069.01, also in the general fund. And this is an increase in various costs. 
telephone transcripts and office supplies. Uh, recorder has one for $1,504.95 general fund. This is an increase in cost in microfilm equipment maintenance. We have four sanitary engineer ones that I will let all. Uh, the first one is six dollars and fifteen cents. That's for a legal ad for the Meadowbrook sewer project. Then we have seven hundred and fifty dollars for our janitorial supplies. We have twenty thousand dollars for the Champion Water District for excavating work, and we have nine thousand dollars for the Howland Water District for excavating. Okay. Item seven: approve of memorandum of understanding by and between the Ohio Secretary of State. Summer County Board of Elections and Summer County Commissioners concerning the purchase of new electronic pole pads and any other necessary equipment for use by the Chumbo County Board of Elections. Secretary of State shall reimburse the Board of Elections for the lesser amount of either 85% of the cost of those acquisitions or the amount of the allocations determined by the Secretary of State as provided by Section 61030, House Bill 33, of the 135th General Assembly. Board of Elections. Anyone on the line from the Board of Elections? Early voting just started today. That's true. People yeah. are on the same time. They, they were here. Last week, it was, it was like two or three weeks. Does it go the next one? Where yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that has probably to do with $137 that the state is. Okay, the next one, approved contract between Board of Elections and Knowing LEC for the purchase of new electronic pull pads in the amount of $356,620. <laughs> state will provide funding to reimburse $128,037 for the total purchase cost with the remaining cost of $228,000 be paid with a transfer from the fund to the Appropriate accordingly. Project's been reviewed and approved by the prosecutor's office. Now, the one above says eighty-five <clears> percent. <throat> right, concerned for the secretary of state pay eighty-five percent. This one here, we're paying two twenty-eight. They're paying one twenty-eight, which the math doesn't add up. Or the amount of the allocation is determined by the secretary. I remember when we talked with. I was gonna say when we talked with them at our office, and then when they were here last week, of course, they said that they were allowed up to one hundred and twenty-eight thousand thirty-seven dollars, and that we were able to use the whole amount because the cost of the pads were greater than the amount that we were, that we were getting from the state. I, I can't speak on them, but that was what they said about. Says it in there, Christy, or the amount of the allocation is So that's so. Did they already buy these things? It's early voting already started, or this is something they want? This is for next year. Okay. They were hoping to, they have not purchased them yet. They were hoping to get this done before the end of the year. Okay. Of course, I'd like to hear a little more about it. It's, yeah. This is showing them new to me with this. And um, do some research after today, I guess. Call down yeah, there. Yeah, call down there. Yeah. Uh, so maybe if someone can come tomorrow and explain it to us. Okay, nine. Authorized Mike Solomon, Trumbull County Transit Administrator. Diane, Senior yeah. Levy Administrator. And Ed Stark, Superintendent for Trumbull County Board of Developmental Disability or Disabled. To advertise for the seal proposal for Trumbull County Wide Senior and Disabled Transportation Services, providing on demand transportation services for disabled residents of any age and senior residents 60 and older, beginning February 1 through January 31st, with the possible monthly extension period not to exceed 12 months. Total funding available for this project will be February 1 to January 31, 26, local share. 1,100,000 plus ODOT 5310 contract as ordered at 554,728, totaling 1.6 million reduced by October 24 to January 25th transportation costs. And for ODOT procurement policies, concurrence letter 
has been received dated 10 13 24 received with this process diane 9 10 and 11 are all related so um 9 10 and 11 are all related so just to jump forward, number 10 is the, by the way, Diane is the senior lead administrator. Number 10 is to commit the local dollar match fund that is needed from sales tax that you've done for the last two years for our transportation program, Sable. That comes out of the commissioner's uh, sales tax fund. Number 11 is the commitment of 750000 but I can only go for one year at this point because our levy replacement language is on the ballot until we know how that will fall. The current 750000 one-year um, allotment that is in this agenda item is being is available through our carrier funds at this time. So once the ballot language is known and the placement passes, then we'll have a second agenda item for the following two years of this transportation. That is clear as much. And then uh, item number nine is to advertise for a three-year transportation program. Currently, that's, we do have that's using senior levy. That's using senior levy, the and disabled, and then Ed Stark's two hundred fifty thousand right. um, for D. Similar to what we did two years ago. Now, Mike Salamone is, is pushing for a three-year contract. The reason behind that is you can, you can attract more transportation companies if you have that longer service commitment. We have a current grant right now that uh, is in the signing process. I think Bill Danzo, prosecutor's office, still has to sign on that. So Christine is going to bring that to you, to your attention, if you sign electronically. So he just signed it. That grant started in July of 2024. We're just getting the contract in September of you know 2024. We plan to use it for September, October, November, December for the current transportation program. So that 200,000 we we allocate for uh, disabled transportation. What what do we um, what do we receive every year on top of that? Because that's our match, right? Uh, we currently are. Our ODOT, it's, it's about five hundred fifty thousand dollars that we've received twice now. Not a guarantee. No, but it's it could be anywhere from like five hundred to seven hundred. Right? I would it say has, right now it's been five fifty, and we've been the only one that has received fifty three ten dollars. Yeah, and WRT has see, not been received fifty three ten according to Mike Sal. Right. Whatever it is, it come to come down. If a an agency wants to purchase vehicles, that comes out of it first, and then we get the remaining. Oh, I see that. And my sisters was at the meeting for the uh, planning for that. I think it's money well spent because obviously you're, you're more than doubling. We have your, double our transportation I mean, system. To include seniors at the table. Um, and for, I still get, I mean, people coming up to me and say, I need a ride, I'm a senior, how do I do this? Diane, how do we, can you, can, just for the record, so everybody hears this, um, for people listening, I mean, it helps to get the word out there all the time. You need to be 60 years of age or older. Um, or a disability. Or a disability. And then how, what's the process like? So everybody. Call Mike Salamone or myself. Uh, Mike is at 330-675-2873. I'm at 675-7846. To get an application, we can email it, we can deliver it, use it on hide, we can mail it. And the process try to make it as easy as possible. As soon as we get that application, you're approved, you're in the system that day. We do need proof with a state ID or that you are of age um, and you're in the system and you have uh, the ability then to schedule a ride two days in advance of your meeting. The cost of rides. Even, and I've said this lately, even. If you're 60 and over and you need a colonoscopy, you're not allowed to drive home. Maybe you don't have someone that can drive you home. The system will pick you up and drive you. You still have to be registered. You're perfectly healthy driving, but that day you need that medical appointment. We can provide. Okay. Good and, and approximately for our door-to-door trips, uh, as of as of now, obviously that's but. Um, what's our cost of door to door 
Correct. Two dollars each way. Right. What, what, what's oh, it costing us? Uh, our our program is at twenty five dollars. Just significantly lower it than it's ever been. The twenty five dollars. I think competition has driven down those prices. Positive program yesterday. I mean, we get daily ten calls a day to register. Yeah. Mike's on vacation. That's why I'm here to speak about it. So, so you think a three-year? So we we're thinking a three-year contract would obviously maybe get some of the larger groups to come in and bid on this because with a year or two years, they can't make up for it if they have to buy vehicles and, and not know that uncertainty of okay, in two years we're not going to be here maybe. So why would I put the capital back into my business? This could potentially attract larger providers, right? Okay. We're just doing one year now is what you're asking for. No, no this is a three-year program. <clears throat> but my my local match from senior levy, senior levy. I can't ask you to commit three years when I don't know if I'm going to have three right. year collections monitored. <laughs> so why don't we do a three-year contract if we don't know if we're going to have the money for year two and year three? It has in the language the there that it, it could even be reduced if we don't get the grant. So it's dependent. On and that language is in the contract. Yes, is in the our. Make sure the commissioners have a copy of the order. Oh, you do. Okay, just I didn't see it. Okay, I didn't see it. Okay, so there is an out if the levy doesn't pass. We have the money, and we cancel the contract. It's in the RFP to cancel the contract. Or if the fifty-three ten dollars. Or reduce because Antonine Sisters wants to buy a vehicle and that amount goes down. We've had enough funding to actually have remaining funds from the local match to meet the demand. To meet the demand for the year. Even with just the local match, we've got enough to meet the demand. You've been fiscally responsible for those dollars. We appreciate it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number 12, concur with Trumbull County Engineer to grant the right of way permits requested by the individuals listed. Necessary permit fee has been submitted and approved. Donald Mobley, J.E. Mateko, and then Chester Schleywell. 13, concur with the engineer to grant special annual supplier fleet permits. TK excavating, Dave's excavating, sugar and oil and gas. 14, terminate the employment from the position of custodian with the building maintenance department. Um, and this was a gentleman that just walked off the job and never came back. Bush, yeah. But that would be correct. Yeah. Multiple calls. Multiple calls. Yeah. Um, no response. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm not really sure, to be honest, with what happened after the custodian. Um, there's really nobody who's able to speak to it. I even called around, asked if anybody, you know, said anything, and he said, I'm just fucking out and leaving. And he did that. So. Has anyone heard from him since? No. No, like I said in the note. Well, we know he's not a missing person or you know, anything like that, right? I'm not going to terminate somebody and all of a sudden they're going to find him in a closet somewhere or anything, right? I don't know. What is this possible? We reached out to this contact. That's all I can say. I'll just ask this one more time, reach out one more time, see if we can maybe send a. Even a certified letter if he's terminated or something, something to see that. Right. Just to cover all basic. Well, that would be for Mr. Hart, if it's his department. Yeah. So, yeah. But again, I'm just telling you what I know is just no call no show. Yeah, I mean, again, not my department. No but call, no show. Is Mr. Hart even drove to his house? Uh, you have to last residence on there and 
scene, like, knocked at the door. And... I mean, it's not a typical, guys, that people do walk off a job and not come back. I mean, this is this is nothing. It's actually got another job. Yeah, this is nothing atypical. I mean, we have, again, I could talk to Mr. Hart and he can go take a drive out. That's his department. That would be his duties and responsibilities. Um, but by no means am I going to go try to chase this gentleman down. No, I understand. I'm just saying. I've tried to call him multiple times. As, as an employer, if someone walks off the job and you never hear from the guy again, I want to know that the guy yes, is um, sane and yeah. alive and healthy and, you know, yeah. But I, I don't disagree. Amnesia or something and who knows. I don't disagree, but I, again, I thought it would be up to the department. That, that's that's their operational needs and their business. So is he working today or is he off today? Sir. Who's off? Who? I don't know. He's on email yesterday or something. This is out this afternoon. Okay. I'll say something to Mr. Burke. Yeah. But I will just tell you, I mean, I just so for the record, on my county phone, I reach, I even texted her. I mean, I have it right here. Uh, I don't have this is Alex. I'm trying to HR. So I can't force somebody to call me back. <laughs> you know? And I really don't want to send a well check to people's house. That's not that's something I want to make it a habit of doing. Um, but I think we should in this situation, before we terminate somebody from not being here, we should maybe have Mr. Hart make a call to the local police department just to check the welfare that Hey, you walked out of work and we haven't seen you in two weeks. Just thinking out loud, maybe that's something. Maybe try reaching out again. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just going to tell you guys. I'm sure we're probably right I'm on this. Right? Yeah. Times. But we don't want to leave any things just in case. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, get our new brother. Yeah. Right there. Does yeah. have an emergency? Yes, we, that's what I'm trying to say. We contacted everybody. Oh, the emergency. Everybody. everybody <laughs> Nobody has called us back. Nobody has answered. He up and left, guys. I mean, I just, so this happens all the time. Right? So I was just told he was here three days. Yeah. So he just he he didn't left. Yeah. Really. He just left and didn't come back. I mean, we're making. So I, like I, I'm long, sorry, but you're kind of making a long big deal out of something. Like that. a long term employee. No. No. Exactly. That. I mean, I worked retail for a long time, guys. It happens every single day. This is nothing typical. I think we're kind of overthinking this a little bit. Um. And again, yeah, no, we watched him. So just so you know, I mean, I even, okay, I'm going to be very honest here. I watched him on the cameras, walk out and walk out and get to his car and pull out. At that, After that point, the gentleman made me a job, guys. Yeah. I, I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really understand that. And if I make a habit, again, if that's your directive as a human resources director, fine, but I'm not going to do that for every single department. That's really up to the department heads, but. If I start a habit now of doing, you know, well checks on every single person that doesn't show up to work the next day, unless it's a tenure employee that I that we know, you know, there's something going on. This gentleman worked three days and then vacated a job. Ah. Don't know what to type. Different world today, I guess. I mean, yep. on okay, fifteen. Authorized board of Trump County Commissioners to enter in a memorandum of understanding with Trump County Sanitary Engineer for the purpose of carrying out the Sheridan Drive Baker School wastewater infrastructure upgrades funded through coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds, SLFRF or Fiscal Recovery Funds Program, ARPA. Funds in the amount of 437469 were originally allocated by the Board of Trump County Commissioners on March 2024. Gary? Uh, Commissioner Julie in the Planning Commission. Gary but, Newbrough. Yeah, Gary Newbrough, Sanitary Engineer. Uh, Julie in the Planning Commission have been uh, a lion's share of these actions here for the next, uh, what are they for resolution, Julie? Yeah, and I just noticed, Gary, the state line roads, that's one of the ones that you said you wanted to take money from, or now? Is that another one? No, no. Uh, what were the three that you wanted to take money from? Heat and shoot. Contract K. Yeah. Heat and shoot. And, and state road water oh, stabilization. State, state road. Yeah, okay. we had, I think, 350000 of ARP for design engineering. Okay. Their contract was something like 347 something. Yeah. The reason I asked was I was going to recommend we take 17 off too, but it's a different project. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, 15 through Julie Green, Trumbull County Planning, 15 through 18 are similar to the five that were on last week. We were working with the auditor's office and the legal attorney 
on the ARP projects to um, obligate the funds. As you know, the end of year is uh, the deadline for obligating all of the ARP funds, and this satisfies that requirement. So that's basically in a nutshell what it is. Yeah, the next four, 15 through 18. The next one is uh, enter in a memorandum of understanding, Jerome County Sanitary Engineer, first carrying out Smith Stewart Road Sanitary Sewer Improvement Project. 17 memorandum of understanding with Jerome County Sanitary Engineer, first carrying out State Line Road Sanitary Sewer Improvement Project. And number 18. Authorized Board of Commissioners enter a memorandum of understanding with Trumbull County Lateral or Sanitary Engineer for the purpose of carrying out Scott Street Phase Two Lateral Assistance Program Construction and Engineering Project. These you have the for me to sign these, Gary, tomorrow. Uh, Joel, you've been yeah. So okay. we'll take care of it. Uh, Commissioner Gary Newbrow, Sanitary Engineer. Now, uh, number eighteen, where I mentioned Scott Street Phase Two. I've been contacted by Mike uh, Devotny. He is their uh, city administrator now. Enter. Okay. Um, was it? Okay. Well, anyway, from the <coughs> village of Newton Falls. And he says on the project, they had funding for the mainline project. But there was this one extension they had to do for one particular house. Wasn't service, and so they had to spend an additional, I want to say, twenty to thirty thousand dollars to have this person connected. And he asked me if there's any way we could we have since run funds from the nine hundred thousand dollars to be able to pay for that extra cost that they um, that they absorbed. And I told him I would get back to it. But just so you know. I, I would get back to him, but so you know that's out there. They can make a request for additional. I, I wish I had the numbers in front of me, but I would just remind it of this myself, Scott, to be too. Um, so, anyway. But the, but the funds allocated will be 900000 is what you're saying? It's going to come in under that? All right. Uh, how many did we qualify so far, Julie? You were in the number? Do we have about 70? How many? Over 70. Okay, let's see. We have 80 of them out there. On heat and shoot, we average about 8,500 a connection. Look at about 680,000. There's 900,000 there. That's the case, then I don't mind. Okay. 1,000, obviously. Yeah, yeah, we need to figure out what the final figures are. And, do that. and if they've already connected, I don't know how that would work with our legal. Yeah, that's the other that's part. That's the other so part that we're going to look at legal and. Uh, there was already a connection yeah. and it was Absolutely. reimbursing. I don't know if that's allowed. Right. You have to look into that. Can I imagine at a minimum would have to follow the UG procurement policy guidelines that we adopted for your Well, when it was a public contract and they constructed on her, I would think it would be yeah. Part of the other requirements so like part about trying to reimburse something. Already spent that may be a stick point, yeah. And that could be that makes this all right. You're gonna get a hundred percent funding, they did. Apparently, this took it over the top of whatever their available funding was. That's why you bring it out. And, and I would have them double check everything on their end, too, because they've had so many changes over the last year. Between administrators and mayor and council people, the people that even presented to us that they I think they're all gone. So yeah, I, I would double check all the math before we commit another penny to that program to make sure they get their house in order and their ducks in a row exactly in what they did, what they haven't done, what they're on the hook for, and what they're not, rather than just have us come to the rescue with anything. You know, they've got to stabilize that first. Okay. I think that's fair. Agreed. Yeah. I'm glad they're on the right track. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad they're moving in a positive sure. direction and bringing the police department back. And and it seems like they had the the big amount of turmoil and uh, you yeah, know that's calmed or 
quieted down a little bit. They're under new management, new some new mayor and new board members and new administrator. Hopefully, um, they'll function normally again. Oh, well, just the benefit of us having this project off of that set of that is a huge, tremendous. Thank you, sir. Okay, number 19. Accept maintenance bond number B1320857 issued by Selective Insurance Company of America for 15 sanitary lateral connections for low and moderate income households in the heat and shoot project area funded the PY 2022 CDBG Residential Public Infrastructure Grant Program and ARP Act installed by Express Underground. Express Underground requests a final payment for the completed work inspected and approved by the Trump County Sanitary Engineer's Office. Maintenance bond, the amount of 20%, the final project of the cost of valid for a period of two years, ending September 16, 26. Green Trump County Planning. This is one of the last few required item steps to completing and closing out this competitive grant we received several years ago for the heat and shoot sanitary sewer project, working in conjunction with the sanitary engineer's office and the contractors and um, specifically, uh, Bill McCloskey and Gary Newbrow to complete this. I believe there were upwards of 40 connections paid for through a variety of funding sources, including ARP funds as well as CDBG funds. 40 connections, how many connections total were there? 80? Well, they were well, they, I think you served well. 20. Well, they never already on active connections, but uh, that seemed to run from Bob. He requested an additional 27 connections okay. for vacant lots, of which he's going to pay the capital. Oh, wow. so, uh, so let's say 81 active connections. Okay. The potential for more. Yes. Okay. Award the best proposal and enter in the lease agreement with DBB Finance LLC with the Trumbull County Sanitary Engineer's Office to lease a Shark 70C65 copier at a cost of $333 per month for a term of 60 months, commencing November 1st, 2024. And why this one, Gary? Uh, I'll, I'll let Bob handle this one. Commissioners Bob Myrano, Sanitary Engineers. Um, our current copier in the sanitary engineer side of our office is over 10 years old, and we're the maintenance costs, it's not currently under lease. So we're paying significantly to have that machine. So we contacted three companies to get quotes for a new copier. Um, it came down to doing better business, which is based out of Boardman and Crosby Mook. It's based out of Warren. Um, looking at a similar type machine, one was from Sharp, one was from Toshiba. The difference in the minimum monthlies, um, Crosby Mook was about $20 less a month, but their overage for color copies was a little bit higher. And we figured with our current copy rates for what Barry does for public hearings and bid books, that we'd be better off paying a little bit higher minimum monthly to have our color overage be lower. So all in all, we think we'll save a few hundred dollars. So we selected doing better in case out of work. Can any other department heads have any input on that? Alex, I know you've dealt with some coffee machines lately. Um you got a little education on it. I will say from what I've seen, everybody does what's best for their business. Like I just heard um, the office specifically, you know, because of the amount of color bottles that. So, and I will say, I mean, you can see it here. So everybody's department kind of has like their nuances in what they need more so than others. Um, I, I will say that we are seeing a trend and kind of getting away from, it has been Crosby Mook who's been coming in as well as the one, the DBB, um, they have been very competitive. So as just keep that in mind as we're looking to transition as you fall out of a contract, you know, again, not saying anybody else isn't doing great, but go out, get your quotes. And we have found that Rico has kind of fallen off and it's been more so of 
it's been, you know, Crosby Muck, which is great, and it's local business too. So I mean, DBB as well. They're all, yeah. I mean, so um, again, something that you need to look into, commissioners, when you get a county administrator, which is not me right now, or in the future, or whatever, or whoever you want it to be, uh, that this is something that they should be doing. Um, they should be looking at all contracts and looking to leverage ways to save costs countywide instead of doing one off nuances. Um, we probably could have a better leverage if we actually went out to bid as a county. Um, and a lot of these things are actually state purchasing where you don't even need to go out to bid. So a lot of these vendors, yeah, are, are through our state purchasing. So again, um, something that we need to look at targeting in the future, um, but near future, right? I think that was what Gary does, the color copies. Absolutely, that's a factor in this. Yeah. Uh, that you've, your stuff's detailed that way more so than a lot of other departments would be. I agree. But in general, there are ways that I think, um, you know, as we move forward, find ways to leverage better costs. You will always, more than likely, always get a better cost when you, when you go out to bid as a larger entity. Uh, we see that with health insurance. We see that with everything, right? I mean, it's just the way it works. So speaking of your energy program, same thing. You know, you go out, you have leverage. So that's how it works. Okay. Mm -hmm. 21. Approve change order number three with Corolla Contractors for the Yankee Lake Sanitary Sewer Improvement Project number five S18. And you're on 96,680 revised in the total contract value 2.680. The entire cost of the change order in the amount of 96,680 is to be paid from project fund 473080 3021 50543. And it consists of uh, the following breakdown and Gary explain uh, the breakdown of why. Hi, uh, Commissioners Gary Newbrow, sanitary engineer. Uh, yeah, it's disheartening that I have to come to you with another project, but I don't think this led to this. Um, the four soils on the edge of the asphalt, I think I've sent you the pictures of this also. We can go back and put it back with the thickness of travel on the road after we pull the trenches and everything. But we work with the highway engineers, both Gary Schaefer. Uh, and determine that uh, the repair drive here, what we're going to do uh, the cost to make the measure or be 80 for this first square yard for the product area of 600 square yards. So uh, that's what prompted that. Okay. Soil and get to that road. I mean, it just fell off in there. That's tracks down the road along the edge. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this right, those unstable soils underneath that road basically really cause a problem. The repair of that, like I, like I mentioned, the commissioner, uh, this is we, we made sure the highway, it's his road, so we made sure the highway engineers are okay with the repair. And uh, use unit prices from Gorilla in order to arrive at that 50,872 acre. Fortunately, when you go that deep in the ground, you never know what you're going to yeah, well, encounter. That, well, that brings us to the second part about encountering things out there. Uh, during the course of the project, we also sense these uh, uh, very storm sewer. Uh, most of it mostly, and this change order is all the unit prices for these items. And this is, that repair on the roads hasn't been done yet. We just filled in the trench with the dirt. It's, it's still dry, but it needs fixed. But on these, we had to replace these as we went. And you can see you pick up something like that. But, well, geez, it's going junction blocks. You come across storm pipes like these. Uh, that they're just unmarked and they're unknown out there. You got to put them back in because about the time you 
remove them, you'll have a, a resident coming up and saying, hey, my basement's flooded three. Yeah, so it's the only findings. We gotta put them all back in. Once it's determined they are functional, I guess you run it up. All the, but this was various items uh, throughout the project. And hopefully this is the end of, of finding these things. Uh, the main line pipe is, is, is my understanding it's uh, just about complete up there and we're still working on that pump station. So but you can see just the various pipes that we ran into the data being reinstalled. Things like that you run Oh yeah, I think of something like that. I'll do that for a bit long. Figure out what that was. Um, various things like this. So anyway, that's the second part of that change. The third part is that um, when they were drilling that force main from the pump station down to Orange Hill Custer Road, as you know, that's a very undulating uh, topography out there. That remains. Like this, and as you're trying to work that force main through there to get the proper depth under streams and things like that, you're not going to get it at the perfect rate you want to if you're moving, if you're doing that directional through there. And when it was done and complete, um, we didn't get the exact rate we wanted, which gave us the possibility of another air pocket working in. So that third part is to install another air relief valve on this line. If, uh, if there is a high point in there, that it's not going to clog the line uh, in the future. It would, we'll have something to release that air from us. And the fourth part of that is a no cost, and it's just to move the substantial completion date uh, to the end of the year. Uh, there were delays in getting all the components for the pump station. Gorilla feels confident that he can get it finished by uh, December 31st. And uh, there's really no extra costs on our end uh, for this to, to give him additional time until the 30th. Yeah. All right. Well, one other tidbit on this. Um, even with this change order, we still have about $85,000 in surplus funds. So we're not in debt for any part of it. This is only 100% for a new about 85,000 pesos. I was hoping it would be more, but now it's down to about 85,000. So there's no more snags. Yes. Okay, 22. Approved personnel action for the employment transfer. Mr. Harrison Cole from the position of sewer line maintenance crew leader to the position of maintenance worker, same pay range, with the Toronto County Sanitary Engineer's Office, effective Monday, October 21st, pursuant to the case of September 17th. Commissioner Bob Myrano, Sanitary Engineers. Um, this is a union transfer. We had one union applicant who has the required CDL. Um, he had shattered both of our maintenance groups, being the package plants and our uh, actual treatment plant. And he decided not to take the package plant, which is on the road, and was interested in being in our plan. Everybody's okay with him okay. giving it a try. 23, we did already with Children's Services. 24, receiving place on file for the record purposes 2023 annual report for the Department of JFS. John Gargano, Trumbo County Department of Jobs and Family Services. Yes, Commissioner, that's the annual report that we provide to the commissioners um, about the, pro uh, about the uh, programs and the costs and things like that. If I may, I could go on to 25 and 25. 20. Approve the promotion of Mr. Alexander Hillier as fiscal specialist with Trump County Department JFS, effective October 28th, and we paid 236 per hour for county benefits, required to serve a nine-month probationary period. Yes. Again, John Gargano, Trump County Department of Job and Family Services. 
this is a non bargaining uh, unit, uh, non bargaining position. Uh, it's been vacant since uh, the uh, gentleman retired that was previously in this in January. Um, there was uh, several individuals that were tested and, and interviewed, and Mr. Hillier came out on the top of that. As to 26, I noticed on this one here, it says what his pay is. Is there a scale that he fits in onto? Uh, usually those are included on all the other ones. This yes. One says the pay. I don't know if I have it here. Yeah. He's, uh, he's going from a uh, range 28, which was $20.50, to a fiscal specialist range 30, which is $23.96. And the gentleman on the left, what level was he at when he left? Uh, I don't know, Commissioner, because he was in there for quite a few years, so I don't know what his final he uh, was. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then number 26, that's to approve the personal action for the employment of Ms. Bobby Garvey as an enforcement specialist assistant at the Child Support Enforcement Agency, uh, effective October 21st. And she will be paid $15.30 per month with full county benefits, but she will serve a nine month probation period. That's a new hire. That's a new hire. All right. 27, receiving place on file monthly activity for the dog kennel. 28, authorizing expenditure responding to mitigating the public health emergency rescue plan, 911 dispatch center equipment. This is what we talked about last week. And this is in the amount of 721,046 for the rest of the phone, backup radios, and the dispatch consoles. No, no. Okay. And all that is very important from Casey, and, uh, because we're in the middle of a, going to be in the middle of a, of a change here as far as the new building. And all that is all portable and can go with us, whatever it needs to. So that's not important to know too. Okay. Uh, authorizing expenditure, Kinsman Township Generator. And that is $16,000, the Township Admin Building Generator. And Gustavus Township, um, I believe that is also uh, an emergency generator for the Township Admin Building and Fire Department, that one's 45000 Julie Green, thank you for that, too. I know you assisted. Um, with the application there to make sure everything all fine good. Yeah, I'm glad I could assist them to get their much needed equipment. And um, so those checks will be, or those presentation things, I'll contact Kinsman, Gustavus, and Hubbard. 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 Hubbard is the next one. And Hubbard Township. Yes. Uh, and that is for another generator in the amount of 92490 And that's for the admin building and police department. And then number 34 goes along with that. Okay, then uh, enter an agreement between Board of Commissioners, Trump County Engineer's Office, and Vernon Township um, to penetration patch and chip seal on Vernon Township roads. The engineers and townships are collectively known as parties. The engineer's office shall coordinate, furnish all materials, labor, equipment, planning, supervise the work, not to exceed $160,000, with 151,673 to be paid by. ARPA funds and the remaining from the township's gasoline tax fund. Okay. I guess that's just cleaning that up a little bit then for 
four, thirty six. Uh, authorize me to execute any old documents required for agreement with Warren Roofing and Insulating Company for the design build roof replacement project, Trumbull County Engineers Cortland Garage, in the amount of one point one million four hundred two thousand five hundred. Uh, it was previously agreed and approved by Bill Danzo. The amendment is necessary to correct the fund number. Didn't we change the name of the company from Warren yes. Roofing and Insulating? <laughs> so we need to change it again with this? Just the fund number. Just the fund number. Just the fund number. Just the fund number. Uh, originally, when it was passed, it was passed to all be paid out of uh, Fund 425 Object Code, which is the last thing that 505609. Um, but that's only for design. That object would only be for the design part, not the actual building part. The actual building part needs to be paid out of object code 505402. And then that way it gets a fixed asset tag and goes into our um, capital asset program. Okay. Well, like, like we said last time, this needs to get moving. It needs to get moving. Yes. In 37, we already handled with Howland. And then 38, a resolution recognizing. 21st Annual Trumbull County Sports Hall of Fame inductees. With great pleasure, the Board of Trumbull County Commissioners joins residents of Trumbull County to officially acknowledge the accomplishments and contributions made by inductees and gradually come to this honor. And there's some names on here that uh, of note. They're Ryan Allison and Dana Abolish, local sports uh, newscasters. Sarah Cash, Kristen Clemson, uh, Mecca trustee. Michael Johnson, Bill Leonard, Robert Leonard, uh, Don Lott, Todd McLean, Jeff Russell, Tyler Scott, and PC Torres. Been here with uh, Kelly Pavel before. Yeah. Yeah. They want some stuff. So proud of their accomplishments and happy to uh, recognize all of them also. And that uh, commission, I do believe they have uh, that coming up if you wanted to attend and represent the Board of Commissioners for that presentation. I'd be, I'd be honored to. Absolutely. And that concludes the regular agenda items for today. Um, anybody have anything in particular they want to bring up first? Before I get to my list. I have. Yes. Jimmy wants to go first. I'm good. sure. Okay. <laughs> um, just wanted to bring up the RFPs that the commissioners agreed to allow our office to work on for. Improvements to the Planning Commission building. Jimmy was helpful with one of those projects. We're trying to put together a list of entities for the ceiling replacement project. And so I discussed that briefly with the maintenance department. And they, I know we had discussed prior that if they're able to do it within a reasonable amount of time or if they have the skill sets, you know, that they would. So I guess it has been determined. I, I don't have anything in writing, but it's based on my conversations with several people, including Bill, that they would like for us to move forward with that. So I just wanted to bring that up. Sure. Um, we do have the carpet RFP that was returned last week. And the, the prices are very close. So I wanted to uh, present it to the commissioners and then you decide what you would like. We asked for option one carpet tiles, option two broad loom carpet. Um, the, the broad loom carpet uh, low bidder was DJV Supplies Incorporated for $21,276.88. The low bidder for carpet tiles was Eric Thompson Company, which is totally carpet here in Warren, and that was $24,278.88. So it's a couple thousand dollars difference in price, two different materials um, or types of carpeting, I should say. And you know, I'm not really tied to either one. I just thought I'd present that to the commissioners and see what your thoughts were on that. As you know, our carpet was damaged a lot in 2023 and really a lot of it's held together with duct tape. And so it's just really outlived its useful life. So, yeah. And so that's one. We did send a uh, the, the request for price proposals out to Viviano Carpet One, DJV, Kohler, Satoli, and Todd. <clears throat> and only received two back. 
And then we're also and as you said, the difference in carbon one is like regular roll out carbon, like you would think. The other one is tiles, and you brought up the benefit of that is if someone's bringing can replace a tile without having to. I I mean I've heard from I think you have carbon tiles in the back. Yes, we do. So I just based on what other people have stated, I don't have carbon tiles in my home, but in a commercial setting or non-residential setting, I guess they do have to. But it is the three thousand dollar price to but I I I'm leaving that up to you too. I, I would be comfortable going with the carpet tiles. Obviously if you get some damage to section of carpet, not pull up everything and do that. I know it's three thousand more, but it makes more sense to go with the tiles. I guess I, I don't know enough about this to understand. I'd like to see what the tiles are in there. I'm not a carpet expert, as some other commissioners claim to be sometimes. <laughs> John Gargano. I'm by no means of that. <laughs> John Gargano, JFS. We have those carpet tiles in CSEA in, um, uh, in JFS. And there is an advantage because if there's a area that's damaged, you don't have to Rip all of the carpet, you know, you go get those squares and you just pull one out and stick the other one back in. We've had to do that a few times at both CSEA and JFS, and it reduces the cost of having to uh, re replace the whole section of carpet. Yeah, so a section gives more support. It's going to keep the carpeting for another 65 years. years. If a section gets more worn or yeah, like you said, damage. We have it in section out. We have it in the uh, I'll say the general areas, not where the workers are. And it's unfortunate, I should have they should have done it in all areas, but those general areas where we've had issues, they come in and they just like pulled out that square and put another one in. Yeah, there's a little bit of a difference because it's a little bit newer, but still you're not replacing that whole section of carpet and the cost and the installation. Stuff like that. The only difference I would think is that something like yours, you're having thousands of customers a month potentially walking in and out of the building. Planning Commission, it's just your staff. You're not having public through there, so the carpet's not going to get near the wear and tear as it would be in a public area that people are coming in and out always had. So there is a difference there, just in my mind, as far as no, right. the use of one versus the use of the other. If that was in an area where the public interacted, and I would say that I definitely say tile sounds like the way to go. In an area in a private office setting where it's just you guys with it, that, that's the only difference. Sorry. We also did a check, thanks to Jimmy. <clears throat> he uh, tutored me a few years ago and had a check on his contractors to make sure that they meet the, the lowest and best criteria. So uh, I don't believe either one are union shops, but they all both have... Um, they're not, they're neither one are accredited through Better Business Bureau, but there's no uh, UCC filings, there's no OSHA violations against either one. So I just wanted to bring that up. So, are any of those a bid union shop? There was only two bids. We sent it to five oh, or six. Okay. Only two respond. Yeah, two respond. Okay, um, Julie, because you had mentioned Alex. Bush, the ceiling you said maintenance is handling that scope or no they're no. bidding out so just to make that known on the record they were okay bidding that contracting that out i want to make sure that that's clear here right yep. now because yep. if the grievance comes across my desk it will be denied right is yep. that what we're saying that's my understanding okay i don't have it in writing <laughs> okay but i did have several conversations with doug and greg and okay. bill and a number of other people at the maintenance department um and We'll, we'll develop the scope of work and run sure. it by bill before we send it out. I just want to make sure because um, that is something that we have to uh, yes. thank you for making Absolutely. sure it was in their contract. We do have that clause. Absolutely. Again, we talked about this. As long as, you know, if they say they can't do the scope of work, then it's totally fine. We can contract out. But that has to come from them. Yeah, I think I think the issue with our particular offices because of the extensive damage to the ceilings yeah. from years of taking, um, it's just the, it's the, the quantity of work required for that to be fixed. And some of the ceilings 
aren't just a matter of replacing ceiling tiles. They're actually whole systems that have to be replaced. So the gridding actually has to be replaced as well, from what I understand. Right. So it is a little bit more cumbersome, yes. commissioners, just yes. from uh, what I've looked at, of course, it means. Uh, so yes, right. And we, I, also, I would agree. we also investigated that there was no, of course, uh, basically there there was no payment. I was I was under the impression that we were using part of our Corsa insurance funds to pay for the damage done. And based on what I read, it's yeah. about we received a check for five hundred dollars. Yeah, five hundred and forty-two dollars to be exact. So. Um, that's another, that's another issue, obviously, that we'll have to discuss with the commissioners is how are we going to pay for these improvements. Um, so we're trying to put together the roof, uh, not the roof, RFP, the ceiling RFP. Uh, the roof is just completed. Uh, the carpet, if, if it's, you know, I'll let you discuss this tomorrow and decide if you would like us to put it on the agenda or <laughs> at a public meeting. I'm not really sure how that process works. Or do you want us to just put it on the agenda for next week and then you can make that decision at that time which one you want to <laughs> award the contract to? I just think for a little bit more money, if you're getting, if you're doing the squares, it could, you know, something unforeseen happens with the carpet. You don't have to trash the whole car. That's all. And kind of, I don't want to say negligible, but it's only $3,000 difference in the grand scheme of things. And you, you never know what can happen in the course of time. And uh, instead of throwing out the whole carpet or having to live with this ugly portion of the carpet, you can actually take that out and place. That's all. That's my thought process. Just wondering why we don't do that for all county buildings, and if it's that easy, why why did we not do it here? Why do we not do it in the courts? Why do we not? If that's the way to go, why why not? And I guess that's where I'd like to get yeah, an I opinion from somebody some, on why we have it. I think we have in some cases, yeah. About well, and are they all quoting the same thing? Right, like maybe one company is quoting though that certain. Well, they, they have you got them things. both quoting. Oh, they they both. Both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Our, so. our um, scope of work is highly detailed. Yeah. Um, and so they're they're definitely bidding on the same exact thing. So you did your quotes on both of them on tiles and both of them on yes. carpet. Right. One was better on carpet, one was better on right. tiles. That's, right, that's good. So I can wait. You just let me know when you okay. want me to put it on. I'll okay. put it on. Um, and then for the like I said, the RFP for the ceiling and the sink are in progress. Uh, I did reach out to Bill today asking about whether we have we had some funds left in the general fund. I was thinking of per actually purchasing the sink and then putting together an RFP for a certified plumber to install it. And um, he stated we don't have an account with Home Depot. So. We have we have one close. Yeah. 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 That I can attest to. Yeah. I mean that no, that's we'll just have to we'll just have to find one. Maybe something else. Yeah. 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 They looked at Granger, they looked at Staples. And sometimes labor price that should found it somewhere else. Right. No, that's true. Sometimes. And that's I think all I had regarding uh, I also wanted to mention, again, I mentioned that our planning commission meeting this morning that the chamber is hosting an event this Friday from 7.30 to 12.30. It's a public policy conference. I believe you can register today uh, on their website. Uh, I'll be speaking on one of the panels regarding economic and workforce There's development. I shared it with a lot of people. Sure. There's a cost. I don't know if it's 45. Yeah, if you're a member. I think if you're a member, it's 35, right? Mm -hmm. take 10 45 or 30. What floor is it? Avalon. It's at the Grand Resort. It's Friday. It's Friday. 7.30. 12. Yeah, 7.30. Yeah, and I believe we're considered. If you work for Trumbull County, you're considered a member. Yeah, I've registered some people. Thirty-five or forty-five dollars per person. Okay. 
Thank you. Go ahead, John. John Gargano, JFS. You know, about a month ago, we had ribbon cutting in the public market. And this uh, Friday, we're going to have the mobile market in our parking lot at JFS from 11 to 2. Hopefully, it turns out well, and then we maybe try that uh, on a monthly basis thereafter. Okay. I have one update. Our Healthy Aging Grant has come to an end as of September 30th. Most of the programs used all of the money. Um, most successful was a uh, Triple Neighborhood Partnership. Uh, has probably 20 different households that they would be included to using that grant. They had a $156,000 award. Um, the home delivered meal programs, both Office of Open Parish, Triple Neighborhood Meals, they used all of their funding. And several others and we have a couple that didn't even respond they applied i reached out to them multiple times and there's just no effort made and it's sad because you know here's money that i returned to the state and it's roughly about sixty thousand dollars it's has to be returned to the state okay so i pushed and i pushed and i pushed and i asked the state every year what can it be used for we had all kinds of different programs. There was food programs, housing programs, and then other, and it covered even things as yeah, the like, technology yeah, piece. Uh, for, Sheffield uh, Valley uh, bought a bunch of rent of the year type, um, and they did like social gatherings with the seniors there, and, and you know, took them around the world using these goggle devices. It's good for Alzheimer's. It's pretty cool. And, and it's good for mm -hmm. Alzheimer's. You know, it's a, it's a forever use for a while while it works. Okay, so um, Yes. Oh, man. Oh, Gary is for all sanitary. No, no, it can't be spent. No. Yes, it can't be spent on street. water for the elderly. Yeah. We can't yeah. I'm just mad. My mother is, uh, yeah. uh, I'm on my own milk. No, why can't you just forget that? They actually, that day they actually did that with of people. the last month. They did that for the last month. I so it's too much. <laughs> 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 we have the financial ability. They tried to do the you know okay. lower income households. Okay, so why did they just forgive more sixty thousand dollars more? Because they didn't uh, have that. All right, I'm not that important. <laughs> 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 so it's too late. Um. We're not trading her sewer bill for your <laughs> oh, mother's <laughs> mobile. Yeah, it was a good try. Though. It was a good try. I thought you were going to say water for the elderly. That would have been a better try. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, that's not a bad idea. Let's try to move on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right now, with that grand ending, that's what kept the other office alive. And then she's going to work for you starting when? She still has some funds to to draw down from by paying the final bills. So okay. we're hoping by the end of the month. By the end of the month. She'll transition to money. Okay, so when she transitions your payroll, what are we where are we putting you guys together? I, what's what's your working you guys? I've got one person at one end of the building, myself at the other end of the building, and Mike Salomon on the fourth floor. Right. Is the room in your building? building? I think you guys were considering moving everyone over to the office building. That place needs a deep clean. Yeah, there, there's definitely room over, not necessarily where she's at, um, but right across the end, other end of the building at the office of elderly affairs. Um, they have uh, more of um, kind of like a wood paneling cubicle setup, if you will. Uh, they definitely have four available offices. Some are smaller than others, but you know, it is what it is. But I would concur. I'm not saying any major sort of construction. Please don't. That's Just not what we definitely need a deep clean. There's, yeah. big, there's boxes. And decluttering. Deep clean declutter, um, but they would at least all have an available office. Uh, that is one thing that I did go look at myself um, in plans to transition all of you guys to be together. Um, but I just want to make sure that the commissioners are okay with because it, it, it's your employee day. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think it'd be good to have them all together. As long as it doesn't need any major transformational renovation. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's going to. 60s panel mm -hmm. and we've got car carpet that yeah. would be in the it's it's gonna need something for this, right? I, I toured it with Alex and it's it's gonna need something. It needs gutted with stuff that's in there that will no longer be needed if the agency's not there anymore. 
their storage and rooms of things that probably date back to the 80s, I'm sure. Um, there's file things like that that actually are going to need removed out of there. And a lot of the stuff probably trash, thrown away, destroyed, whatever. Square parts. Well, I think to uh, square parts, you won't pull it. You know, while we're transitioning, um, while Mary Beth is kind of just closing up the funds and all that, I think that is something that maybe she should be tasked with doing. It's really going through and identifying what can be, you know, yeah. cost. I mean, that could be part. I mean, while we still have her under that office of elderly yeah. like, that's something that we really should have. Her do. She's not delivering meals anymore, and really, we're just closing up financials. I don't know um, what so they did, and not only that, but I hope I'm not out of line with this. But when Mike comes back. If the grant paperwork's in like an eight hour full day, he's gonna be moving that office too. He could be over there going through offices, preparing the office, you know, putting in a full day as much as he can with allowable time to get that office ready. And but if that's the way to go, I think that's the way that frees up one uh, having one work over here and one work over here and yeah. one work yeah. at the stone building, I don't think works. So I, I am fully supportive of. Mike moving to there and out of the stone building, you know, it, as soon as we can get them out of there. Yeah. Preparing the office that could fit all of them together in one room or one thing. But again, I, I would not want to work there myself right now, the condition that it's in. It will need deep cleaning. It will need, um, you know, the bathroom, even the bathrooms and stuff need some love as far as cleaning. So we need to get a crew over there. We need to have, have Bill Hart assign you know, days worth of custodial staff over there uh, to do something and probably our maintenance guys to just make sure even all the lights work and everything else in that building because it's been ignored for a lot of years. And then all the assistance we can to get Mike over there and assist Diane still has her full office that she needs to move. We can't just expect her to do it. We need to make it accessible so she has at least as good of an office as she had <laughs> in the other building. And even if that means expanding, knocking a wall out, doing something to update something, it, it's going to need to be. This isn't just something like, hey, move out Friday or the new building Monday. And that's well, I'd, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see what the plan is before I say yes. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, all this is fine and good, but we have homes for everybody right now. And it's going to cost a significant amount of dollars. At least look at towards that yes. Yeah, I think that's a, I think, um, Mr. Kalamazo, so what, what we should do is, I think what I'm hearing from both of your conversations, and I'm just trying to find like a middle of how we can make this work, is that it would be county union work, obviously, with the our maintenance, the, our maintenance department. Um, not, this is nothing that sounds like it's out of their scope, but they couldn't be between the answer care workers and the custodian group. So if we could even just kind of cost out how much it would be for them to get all this accomplished, you know, and what they think it needs, yeah. it would cost. That way we can come to you with a kind of sort of idea plan yeah. versus just kind of, you know, here's what we're doing. Um, but I will say um, just outside of cost aside, looking at it strategic planning wise, it, it, it definitely makes a lot of sense sure. um, to work um, harder. I mean, to work smarter, not harder and how all the proper players the together. Yeah. However, we can make that happen with the least, you know, sure. I, I will absolutely um, so if you don't mind, um, I think that maybe like a little mini team of Diane, myself, and Bill, we could work together to try to figure out how we facilitate all this. Sounds good. Because I do have employees asking me kind of like, what's going on? <laughs> Where am I going? What am I doing? So I just want to make sure people feel like they do still have a home. The ones, again, who don't just walk off the job, but the ones who are here and who want to be here and who want to be, you know, long-term yeah, employees. Time to so just walk off the job. Yeah. Um, another thing too, speaking to that, so Diane was lose. I want to make this also clear. Like, but we're not vacating or losing that spot that she's yeah. in. There is a nice conference room in there. Also, kind of needs a lot of cleaning. But you know, that room will still be available for you guys to use. I mean, if if, if this comes to fruition. So. Well, not only that, but the, we've had a need right now. Where we've discussed the coroner said he doesn't have any space to meet with families to do yeah. the things he needs to sure. do. We leave the conference room as it is there. It's an extra room in that building, whether it be Board of Elections, whether it be another county agency that's looking to meet with something, whether it's the sanitary engineer meeting with somebody, we can have a, we have a county conference room in that facility that we can leave as is. And oh, whenever we have small. Yeah, it is it's very it is, but it, it'll it'll seat you know, ten or twelve people. Yeah. But but at least now for like the coroner's needs, 
you know, if he's working in a garage in one place, we know that's not going to be anything in the next six months where he's going to have something. And then upstairs, which is accessible really for the public, he can utilize that space now. That cover that builds for it's still our building. Whether we yeah. have, mm -hmm. you know, we're paying le less electric anyway, right. moving them all in one or, or less sure. utilities on both sides. But we're still we're still gonna. It's in the same complex. It's like we're gonna have an outside agency come in, or sure. we're not gonna lease it out to Joe Public. Um, but um, being the way it's set up now, we can leave it that. And someone's gonna need an office somewhere to go into for something countywide, and, and I'm sure that's a a good basic office for somebody. And if that one was big enough, it is more of an open space with the windows and light and everything. But to move Mike and her into that room with three offices and that one. Yeah. Why would you do that? We already have four offices and a lot more storage space than the other one that's already there. But I do agree it needs. One extra question. Can, uh, I don't know what county protocol is. Uh, they have steam tables and heated bags for the food items yes. delivery. Can that be donated to another agency? I mean, I'm sure senior some of books, the steam tables and the bags, maybe any of the I would be in favor. Are we allowed to donate uh, that? If we could donate to a nonprofit, I would have to say, Chrissy. Our new capital asset policy that was passed this year does leave it up to the elected official yeah. or department head as to whether or not the item is going to be sold, yeah. have deals, donated to another place, or scrapped. Would that be a journal action and item? Uh, yeah, no, department said, yeah, like official approval. Well, I think so donating it to Trumbull Mobile Meals or whoever's going to utilize this. Well, we have country neighbor, country neighbor, country neighbor all the stuff. Find, find, find one that's definitely Trumbull not profit. And, also oh, yes. and then, Bill Danso, Trumbull County Prosecutor's Office. Um, the capital asset program is different from what the law says. Just for what it's worth, if the estimated value is under $2,500. You can dispose of county property essentially however you see fit if the estimated value is in excess of that then there's a specific procedure where it has to be sold at public auction internet auction something like that there is a section of the code that allows you to to give property to nonprofit agencies but there's a whole process to that where you have to advertise allow nonprofits to sign up on the list to receive them so depending on what the expected value of this stuff is, we would need to explore what sections of the law would apply to it. So just to kind of give you that heads up, uh, the first step is to give Diane yet another job and uh, try to estimate the value of the things that she's uh, you know, proposing that the county could potentially dispose of. And I would say that's a great assignment for your first new employee to do. And she would, I mean, uh, Mary Beth would know because she's procured. I mean, at some point we procured these items. Obviously, they've depreciated a ton. Yes. They're old. They're sitting there. Um, I mean, like I saw them. They're, we're talking pizza, one of them. You know, like those things to put pizzas in, like the. Some of them are bad. Yeah, some of them have food inside still, you know, like remnants. I mean, so we're not talking about, I, I totally understand what sure. you're saying. Maybe the warmers potentially, but I, I would have to say, looking at how old they were and, and again, with depreciation. That, so so in know. light of all this, their asset policy, not correct. We like, may have the, to work. We to, may have to work to restructure value, that, like, just as a well, larger yeah. issue. And again, Bill Dan, so again, the, the asset policy, I think, you know, as long as the state auditor is satisfied <laughs> with the asset policy, that can be separate from the, the actual disposition. But I mean, it should include some of that. In there, that's and, and we can certainly work on that, but it is it's it's hard to tell. You know, as you know, you could buy something that costs five thousand dollars and it becomes a capital asset, but twenty years later, you know, it's broken, it's we destroyed, it's not worth five thousand. Right. It's it's worth a made nothing. So maybe. Let, yeah, so, we do dispose a lot of older stuff. We do right. for for accounting right. purposes. We're not. Uh, putting things into not requiring things to be put into our capital asset program that are less than $5,000. Yeah. We only depreciate uh, items that are greater than 5000 Okay. And that's been a while. That, that did not get invented in the capital asset policy. We kept okay. it. So we just. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point, Chrissy. We didn't change any dollar amount thresholds. We okay. just. For the capitalization, for right. putting it on as inventory, as we did change yeah. it. Before we said. It, and anything over five hundred dollars. The new policy said under a thousand. No, between thousand and five thousand was department or like head at discretion. So our, our capital assets are large and 
Yeah, we had like staplers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we legitimately had people putting staplers as a cat class. So, and that's just not hundred dollar. I then yeah, I got yeah that recently. Got eighty five dollar chair. The little Dymo printer things. I mean, those are not over five thousand. I mean, yeah, but we'll work with you. We need to amend that part of the policy to include worthy on that. Very good point. Just to be safe. It's like that gap between the twenty five hundred to the five thousand. Mm -hmm. I think is what we need to really like. Yeah, and, and what safe. we're talking about that was not the purchase price, but the value at the time of disposal. Of disposal, right? And what we may be requiring them to document at that value. Oh, good point. I'm being green. I'm gonna call you about <laughs> that later because I'm not. Understanding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shortly call you tomorrow. Okay, I will. It's not, it's not pressing. <laughs> so we just have some work to do. Okay. Okay. We've got it all. Once we've got it at a place where we can present it and feel like it's a, it's a yeah. feasible solution. I don't think we're talking about a massive build out. Oh, no. no. I mean, and also, guys, too, again, I'm just going to leave it with this. Don't forget that I, mean, I love doing home projects. Again, I'm no HGTV person. I don't claim to be somebody but not, but you can also paint white you can paint wood in with white. I mean, we're just talking about a coat of yeah. white paint. It'd be, it would actually probably make a huge difference just opening up the space, just painting. So, yeah. because it's completely, I mean, it's like, you know, 1970s, but you can, you can, you can paint it. And, and it's all paint. coming back. And but again, it's blue duct tape on blue carpet coming back. That's all I uh, At least uh, that's my uh, out. And I'm a fan because <laughs> air conditioning doesn't work. And I go on. It's beautiful. I'm my happy first so I. Still, I mean, we might have to yeah, get a little. There's a beautiful Trumbull County little area. I don't know what that mm -hmm. is, but you art piece that's on the wall and it's a big oh, right. house. And it really is a nice piece from based on the cars and the picture, maybe the early 80s. There's a gremlin in there or something. <laughs> but that really needs to be preserved, maybe in the soul of society. I think, I think, I think, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's removable. Yeah, I think so. it's like that. <laughs> It's on the panel. It's removable. Okay. Um, couple things. I had anyone else have anything for you at the moment? Um, prosecutor's office. Yeah. Uh, uh, commissioners, we had uh, recently a long-term employee retire and. Uh, as you guys might recall, and I know the auditor's office might, uh, when an employee retires, there are certain payouts that go to that employee of unused vacation times and a certain amount of sick leave time. That is not something, though it is something we put on our agenda, the number of expected retirements, it is not something that traditionally departments budget for, for that payout at the end of employment. Uh, so that being said, we did alert the commissioners that we had at least one expected retirement this year that did happen. And now uh, we're coming to the commissioners because basically we need to get a, a, an approval for an additional appropriation on that. We spoke with the folks at the auditor's office. They said we needed to bring that to the commissioner's attention. Um, it, it's not really an option, unfortunately, in a way. It's, it's a, it is a something that the law requires us to pay out that vacation and a certain amount of the sick leave. So um, I'm just kind of presenting that to you. I'd like to put it on the, the additional appropriation list for next week. The total of that is going to be $39,799.20. Uh, again, this was, I think, a 35-year employee. Uh, that's the, the good news in the prosecutor's office is we tend to keep employees long-term. The bad news is when employees leave after long-term, they generally have accumulated a, an amount of uh, vacation leave and sick leave that's unused. So... As uh, long as you guys are, are good with that, we'll put that on the additional appropriation list for next week. It's almost the exact amount of your conference room we just lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We can just get different color duct tape from Diane. Hey, we have a conference room in Diane's old office. So <laughs> you can use it anytime you want. Get you the code. I'll get some new duct tape. I've got an option off the duct tape with a printer. There you go. <laughs> I'll roll up the next <laughs> <laughs> Major Mason. Yeah, Dan Mason, uh, Sheriff's Office. I'm just going to be presenting the uh, ICS Solutions contract from last week with corrections. There was also a couple other minor 
I sort of left off the contract that we're in the RFP and then we would present it back to us. And we said, I, I also this morning had emailed you the contract. Can you highlight the changes on there so that we see what was changed? It went from the 80%, sorry, it went from the 70% to uh, 80% gross uh, that Trumbull County would get. It also, there was a text messaging that went from 20% to 25%. Uh, they listed in the contract that they sent us 55 inmate telephones. The correct number is actually 67. And there's also a benefit that's gonna go be passed on to inmates. The original contract said two free phone calls per week. The new contract said two free phone calls per week plus two free text messages per week. Very good. Thank you for that. I forgot one more thing. So yes. I was going to bring up the work member application it's closed on September 27th. Okay. And I wanted to just see. I believe you received two applications and just would like to request the commissioners act, take action on that in the near future. I know in past years, sometimes we've gone till the end of the year. I know our calendar is uh, limited this year where you had stated, I believe the last meeting is December 19th. So I, I would greatly appreciate it because the very first Tuesday of the year is our first class and zoning meeting. And in order for us to have that, we need to have a full, at least know who, who will be replaced on application, if anybody, or reinstated, what, whatever your choices are. So we had reached out to the Warren City for their recommendations. And I mentioned it to Mr. Barron today. I also reached out to, um, Melissa Phillips, and she had stated that she wasn't able to, you know, do that this year. So, you know, that, she, you know, you would indicate an interest in her potentially being a representative for Warren City. Um, and then it's my understanding that both Helen and Liberty have recommended that Darlene St. George continue on her term. And, you know, so the that's at large position. The at large was at, to, uh, as I yeah. don't know for sure. I we do. We have one is already there. It was a reappointment, and then if he decides or we decide different, there's one other one. There's a third in there, but there was no application. Okay. So that's up to the commission. Right. So um, I we put it in there, but there's no application. So no application, but uh, there's like a resume. Yes. So, so I just wanted to bring that up because the last couple of years, you know, we we waited until the very last minute and it's just it's just very um it's a challenge for you know getting making sure that we have continuity. Getting things approved. So, okay. Okay, first, uh, I, I like to, just a couple of things I think we need to pick up. I've got a lot of calls lately with the same questions over and over again every week, every month. Uh, first one, and the biggest question I get more than anything is what's going on with the dog pond? When is this dog pound going to be done? Where are we at in the stage of the dog pound? And of course, animal lovers ask that question a lot. Um, and also, I get a call yesterday. I talked to uh, Jason from Healthy Hearts and Paws. I mean, we have a problem that's out there that we need to address as a community. He's got 81 dogs right now at his facility. Our dog pound is maxed out with the number of dogs they can have at that facility. So we've got I would say somewhat of an emergency crisis going on in this county that there are so many abandoned dogs and cats. Um, and with just relating to the dog issue, I mean, to have 81 of them there waiting for adoption in a private facility and what we have in the pound, um, 
we've got to do something. We got to ring some bell, set some alarm off, or something for the public. One, we got to, we have to be more conscious within our own families and within our own communities of people getting pets they're not going to take care of, and maybe not allowing your 17 year old son to bring a dog home and you know and breed it or or whatever. Um, you know, we got to have some responsibility as a community to watch out for our own. And if these pets are being abandoned, if these pets are being abused, they're being neglected, family members need to step in and, and handle it themselves before it becomes our responsibility and nonprofit's responsibility, the community's responsibility to take care of an animal that somebody took responsibility of and then neglected. Yeah. So we, I, I think it just we need to raise the awareness with that as much as we can. Uh, the other thing is I would challenge the community before you go outside of the area for a designer dog and before you go looking for the next doodle that comes down the block, consider, <laughs> no offense to the doodle owners, but we're kind of doodled to death here. We got 81 dogs at home that wish they were a doodle right now that are being unloved in a, in a kennel somewhere. Mine was from a puppy mill, if, for the record. <laughs> well, what I would say is... If you're going to consider a pet, consider adoption, consider going down at least seeing what they have available there at, at Healthy Hearts and Paws, seeing what we have at the dog pound first. And we'll offer like, And we'll offer like, but before you go to an internet search or whatever to find a breeder somewhere to find the dog, if you're just looking for a companion or especially if you're some of these older pets, um, <laughs> I'll be going down there myself today even. I've got an older pet, lost one. And you know, that one's lonely by himself at home. When we take care of one, I can take care of two. Um, so I'm, I'll be looking for an older dog myself or something that, that just needs a new home without going through the whole puppy stage again. So maybe consider that if you've got a pet at home that lost its partner that's been with it for years and years of adopting another older one to let your dog at home finish its life out with a companion. And th there's plenty of them in these facilities to do that. So um nor are they in need of people, but to feed 81 dogs, to take care of 81 dogs, we need a lot of volunteers and a lot of money. And you know, and I know there's a lot of pet lovers, the ones that call me all the time, what's going on with the dog pound? I know they're giving, but I would say let's do our things as we can as a community to kind of let's let's tackle this epidemic that's happening here right now and um, assist these people that are stepping forward where no one else is. Um, not to steer direction to any one thing, but any animal shelter or anything like that. You know, this is something, you know, write a check, do whatever you can, because uh, you know, to, to hear there's 81 dogs in a facility that just opened, that's crazy. And some of the horrific stories of how we acquired these dogs are heartbreaking with this. So um, yeah, that, that's what I'm asking maybe you, Commissioner, and myself. Yeah. We can go on social media, uh, do some type of challenge to the community. Let's get these dogs adopted. Let's let's find loving homes for these animals, and let's less the burden of not only our dog pound, but the private entities that are out there in the shelters by encouraging people that if you can, if you're considering it, now is the time to act and do something about it. And let's let's find homes for these animals. I agree wholeheartedly. And I mean, we're doing the same with our, you know. I know we got a big thing. We're trying to find yeah. a place for emergency services, trying to find a place for a morgue. We're trying to find a place for employees. You know, this is all part of the process as a community, right. you know, that we need to step up our game a bit. So, so I think to what we're trying to do, obviously, with the, we've got about 15 or 17 kennels that we have currently. And as you know, we're landlocked. We would double the size of those kennels, well over 30 kennels um, in the new facility. The architectural renderings that we, we showed at the, at the fairgrounds, you know, I wanted to scale that down a bit. I thought it was a little too much, uh, not not as far as the space, but the architectural design, the pitch of the roofs and, and the high uh, ceilings are all very nice, but it doesn't need some of that stuff. So I think Dave Snyder has sent over new renderings uh, recently to the commissioners. If you can look at those, um, I think we kind of scaled it back without functionally changing anything and what we're trying to do as far as care and adoption for the dog. So, um, you know, he even said if the commissioners are okay, the new, uh, the new specs that we can potentially, potentially, um, go out, uh, 
you know, this could potentially be in the fall, we could start breaking ground, um, which is, you know, upon us. But um, we, we know that there's definitely a need out there, obviously, that, that all these, and, and this unfortunately isn't anything new that we've had here in Trumbull County. Our pound has been full many, many times. Um, all these, um, you know, different associations are full many, many times over. That's part of what spurred this uh, development of, an, of a new dog pound. So uh, I, I urge the board to look at those renderings and take a look at it. Again, Bill looked at it, I looked at it, and then just, I love the facility that, that Dave showed us at the fairgrounds, but I thought it was just a little too um, exorbitant. exorbitant, exorbitant. So we, we scaled it down. Um, and I think, you know, without, without changing the functionality, just sort of scaled it down to, to make it more affordable um, and, and continue to, to, to do what we said we were going to do. And that's, you know, increase adoptions ultimately and um, house more dogs and, and have zero kill pound. That's what our goal is. And uh, we were very close to doing that, but they need the facility in order to make that happen. So, um, yeah, I'm sure Dave sent that over to you if you can take a look at it. Um, he's been very good to work with. If you have any questions on it or you want any input on it, please let them know. Uh, by no means, you know, saying that we're going this direction without the board's input. So, um, but I think it's it's uh, definitely um, something that we need to look at in the future. And I guess what my whole gist of this meeting today, what I'm thinking about is wheels of government, everyone knows, go slow. Slow. But, you know, it took us a year to get this roof on the engineer's building and for many reasons. Yes. We started talking about the dog pound almost two years ago. Yeah. And when we got the two hundred thousand dollar donation from a benefactor that passed away. I just want to make sure the public knows too. We we we're gonna step our game up with everybody in that challenge. Everyone from the architects to the uh construction workers, whatever it takes that we need to when we come up with the idea, we gotta see it through so we can get to the next one. Yeah. And there are many, many next things coming down the road. No, you're right. And we got to put some completion in some of these things. And we need to lead that way. And I know we are, but we need to reiterate yeah. that our commitment that we are moving forward with the dog pound. Let's kick it in gear. Let's go with it. We're moving forward with 911. Let's kick in the next you know, challenge, Stacy. We need to have another 911 review board meeting. Let's get that going. Let's not sit on it for another day. Yeah. You know, let's let's move in that direction to move 911 sooner than later. Um, we we talked about with the dam meeting last week. Their board is meeting at the end of the month with their regular meeting. Let's move on them, make a decision with what's going on. Let's move on this thing and let's not delay anything any further uh, with what we're doing. Um, and the last thing it really is outside of us, but I did get calls this week, so I promised I would address it. Um, you know, is that a township with the issue they're having with the auditor's office? They said, hey, what are we gonna do about payroll? We got another month coming up, we need to pay people. I know it's in with legal, this and that. We need to facilitate moving this forward to get Bazetta compensated somehow, some way, whatever we got to do to make sure that we don't get a situation where township is behind on any payments or gets in a situation financially. We don't want that with any of our townships. We want to make sure everyone moves forward with that. Um, so let's um, let's work together to do that. Let's let's come to some agreements. Let's let's move forward with it without having. I just don't want the wheels of government clogging up as everybody knows as everybody just assumes government um could be a pit you know that, that where nothing gets done we've done a lot in the last year and a half you and i and the, with this board have done an awful lot with a lot of obstacles and we just want to keep this momentum moving forward make commitments that we have so much more to tackle we can't get to that next up till we put the final uh, finalization on the stuff we've already started. And just as another, and sometimes this is what convolutes it. But, uh, as, you know, it, there's a fine line between doing your due diligence and and, and maybe, you know, getting off track. But the, the, I was approached by um, Pound Superintendent uh, James Cantalone, who was here today, uh, looking at um, North Road School for a facility for 911. You know, this is an, this adds another, um, you know, they think it would be perfect. Can you come look at it? It's one of those things. We've got to continue to do that due diligence, I think. But at the same time, it sort of gets us off track in a way because you have to you have to give it at least a look-see, you know, or look once over. 
to, to make sure that it's something that we can actually use or not use. So I'm meeting with um, James and the, and the superintendent to at least look at that on Thursday. And I know we've done the feasibility study and I know that, that there are different options out there that we need to be looking at, but how, how do you not do your due diligence and at least give this a look? And well, I guess too, when I get complaints or I hear from people, like you guys need to do that. You, they don't know. You're already meeting with Mr. Bannon. You're already right. doing that. Of course. I, I already went and looked at the coroner's office. Right. I, I've already met with uh, Mr. Snyder about the dog pound just this past weekend. Yeah. So there are things that they don't see just because they see these meetings. Yeah. They don't see what goes on on Monday afternoons and Tuesday nights and Friday mornings when we're not here in front of right. the camera. And those are things, I don't know, maybe we just need to elaborate a little more with what's going on yeah. in, a, in a different situation, a different world. We may have commissioners that handle certain departments, give updates weekly on what's actually going on so the public hears. You know, we're not in that world right at this point to be we're able not. to do that. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going in this like soup of what we do yeah. that we just tackle what seems like what's at hand and what we address in a meeting. They don't see all the moving parts of it. But I, I still don't want anybody to sit back on their heels and think anybody's just coasting or cruising no, through. I don't mean government you know, i don't want government our government at least to be that way i know julie works her butt off every day gary's working his butt off every day diane's working her butt off every day prosecutor's got an inbox that i don't even want to imagine the stuff he's dealing with every day and john with all your employees these people are working we're working as government sometimes the squeaky wheel gets the grease or gets the headlines in the newspaper but by no means are we did we forget about the dog no Wait, means no. we forget about 911 or the employees are waiting well, what's going on it was Hurry up and I'll hurry up and wait. A lot of action and nothing. They may not see everything, but we need to still keep a conscious that we need to check ourselves too to make sure that we aren't delaying a day or two or a week or putting things off at all. We just got to keep it moving forward for the public. Agreed. Agreed. So that's a lot, of parts, a lot of moving parts. And we have a lot of issues to tackle, especially capital asset issues. And, um, I think we're doing our due diligence, but it but it does take a little bit of time. It's been an awesome last two years so far. It sure has. But, sure has. but we just need to keep that momentum moving. And when I heard yesterday that, you know, it held the yards deposit at 81 dogs, that kind of sparked me like, holy cow, as fast as you move, the things keep piling up more and more and more. Right, right, and then right, right. that just ties in with the dog pound questions that I get weekly from people that, yep. what's going on with the dog pound? And, I, and they will keep us in check. I mean, there are well, people that, that want to know weekly, you know, yep. what did you do last week? Okay, right. not, not what's going on next week. What did you do last week right. to move forward? So that's why I need, if we don't put it on the table, we can't address it. We can't talk about it. Absolutely. Now knowing that there's a new rendering for the, the plan, you know, that that's yeah. information that was not out there before for everybody. Okay. But behind the scenes, it sounds like you got it covered. You know, but the public doesn't always see that. Yeah, yeah. And the media only picks up on sometimes, uh, you know, the sore thumb that sticks out or whatever, the, you know, the, the sexy news that comes out. Yeah, sure. <laughs> not Raymond, but everybody else. Did anybody else have anything for the good? I want to make a recommendation. I'm sorry. That's real quick. Years ago, elected officials used to do public service announcements, partnering with our local television stations. You may want to do one of those for to bring a light to the issue with the dog situation. We also need Bob Barker to help people yeah. spay and neuter their pet. Right. I, I did bring that up to Jason yesterday about, and that's where I said, I'll talk to the commissioner of Camelaisa tomorrow, bring it up at a public meeting. Yeah. And like I said, if we can team up maybe bipartisan way as commissioners on behalf of the dog pound and, yeah. and they have yeah. long, you know, let's, let's, let's hit that on our social media. Let's kind of lead that way with make that by bringing it up today, we'll bring it as an issue. Yeah. And hopefully Ray print something there that says, Hey, there's an issue going on. Consider adopting, you know, consider giving love to an animal that's, that's sitting in a shelter right now. Not only these animals need a home, but we need the space. And yes. we need, you know, the less miles to feed, the less burden it is on the taxpayers. Someone else can take care of it at, at their home and adopt that animal. Now, right now, it's just a problem. It's compounding. And now we're getting the winter months when it's colder, you know, and it's going to require a lot more TLC, a lot more fuel a lot more heat a lot, you know, a lot more of everything um let's get the let's clean out some of these kennels before we can. Oh. rookie move <laughs> <laughs>
That's all. He hasn't seen the slide. It's old. Yeah, the slide show. Yeah, he probably hasn't even noticed the slide show. I've been watching. I have. Everything. I have. Okay. Yes. okay, and with that, I guess the last thing is there is a tourism tour that we're doing. Oh, yeah. At the end of, we'll get to Sean. At the end of the month. Um, now's the time I think where Trumbull County shines. My favorite time of the year in Trumbull County. Hunting season's here. There are people deer hunting, there are people duck hunting soon. <laughs> There's still good fishing going on in this Mosquito Lake. Um, we have three of the largest wildlife areas in the state that are in our county, so we will have thousands of visitors come to Trumbull County um, to recreate here over the next couple of months. You got all the apple festivals and apple farms, and I encourage people to go to Hartford, I encourage people to go to Lordstown and, and see the little farm markets that we have, the Creeksides in Hubbard or in Howland, and, and all these little unique little things that make our town, our townships and our, our county great. Um, take Sunday drives in the fall and see what we have to offer in the county. You know, and this is the time of year that I live for, particularly it's, you know, I'm a fall type of guy. And, you know, when you smell, when the weather's 40 degrees and, you know, to me that just gets my blood flowing when it comes to the cold weather like this, being an outdoorsman. So um, we encourage people too to get outside and see what Chumbo County has to offer during, during the fall. Not for summer, but that's okay. It's okay. We have plenty of summer activities too. Yeah. All right. Oh, Sean, Mr. Shook. Sean Shook, Carmel County resident. The dog pound is one of the things I wanted to hit on today. Uh, we haven't heard anything in a while, and there are people that want more frequent updates. Uh, from what I heard you say, it sounds like obviously there's no way they're going to get into that new pound this year. So another problem is, and we kind of addressed it with, uh, with Jason, and then Jason's been swamped pretty much since he opened up. Dumping of the dogs, the severity of the injured dogs is getting worse. We had one dump in one township. There's that poodle that was dumped, that was burned. That was just in the news yesterday. It's really on hand. Uh, another thing I was hitting was, you know, winter's coming. <clears throat> kind of addressed it. Winter's coming. Uh, and every year is a problem at the pound where we're going to run out of space because they can't use them outside kennels once the temperatures drop. So what are we going to do this year? Let's start thinking about this now. What are we going to do about the overflow? So let's, let's think about that now instead of waiting until it's 30 below. Something can have to be done. You know they're going to run out of room. You know. and they can't overflow on Jason. Jason's full already. Yeah. In the past, we've used um, the old fire station. So a portion of that that was heated. We just eat it and we kept four or five kennels in there, dogs during the winter time. That may need to be an option again uh, in the process. But uh, yeah, every every year this this becomes a, a, a greater and greater issue, unfortunately. And people are not caring for animals the way that people used to care for animals, I guess. It's very sad and it's a bad, very sad commentary on society in general. But at the same time, um, we're moving as quickly as we can. We know that we want to build something, but we don't want to build something that's, um, you know, first and foremost, as Alex said before, you know, you're you're going to increase to thirty kennels. You're going to need more employees. Obviously. You're going to double. You're going to double right. your employees because you're going to need and overhead. Yeah, because of all that. Right. So, but, so I'd love to build one yeah. with a hundred kennels. To be, to be honest with you, but can the can the county sustain that? Can the county right. financially? You know, do that. I think we're in a better spot now. We're getting more license fees and collecting more money than we ever have. Thanks to our auditor, she's done a phenomenal job. Um, but, but, you know, I think this is going to be a much needed improvement when you talk about care. When you talk about, as Julie brought up, spay and neuter program, we're going to be able to use Animal Welfare League and their facility for our spay and neuter program, which is already, which I'd like to see as mandatory. And uh, we're working towards that. That's all expensive, too. Um, you know, as far as shared services, you know, it's going to be like sort of a one-stop shop where, okay, if you don't like a dog here, you might adopt a dog here. So I think it's 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 going to be uh, it's going to be phenomenal. But I, but I sympathize with what you're saying because it has been a long time coming, and there have been 
a lot of hiccups in the road. There have been a lot of hiccups just finding this facility, finding this space. And thank God for Animal Welfare, they donated this property to us. Um, because otherwise, we'd be looking at different places. We looked in Warren, we looked at Warren Township, we looked at Champion um, prior to this, and it just didn't suit our needs. So I think this is going to be a lasting improvement that we're going to be very proud of in the future, and it can't happen soon enough. I agree. There's, there's not just a problem with the dogs. We have a serious cat problem coming kind of also. You're right. I have a really bad cat problem. Oh. Feral cat. Yeah. Yes. Again, with spay and neuter, it's really important. But the funding couldn't be spay and neuter. It's not there. There's not a problem in the world. Yeah, the last little something does it a couple times a year. Right. And Bob Tapley yeah, gets I, in on it. Oh, TNR is all. I heard something you say, or like I said, we can't get a call. It's my office. Your face looks like a We don't talk clean up. I just need to correct you. We said you said about the tablet. We've seen it years ago. Talks on the pound, they go back way far. Pound has been on the back burner. I can remember. It hasn't gotten the attention either. Another thing I wanted to hit on was where are we at with the new building for the fair? The new building with the bathrooms down the other end. Where are we at with that? Any, any updates on that? Or H building. Bill Hart. Bill Hart, Trumbull County Maintenance. Um, I just met with Mike Swinsky yesterday. And we're ready to go out for an RFP as far as two weeks out. So we're ready to move on to the new 4H junior building. The bathrooms that I think you're talking about are already done. There's no, the, well, the new building will have bathrooms in it. Yes. Down by the porch. And new, yeah, showers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What which other building are you referring to? No, that's the one. Oh, okay. The, okay. the new the new the big one. Oh yeah. Yep. It's coming. Yep. It's two, about two weeks out for an RP. Mike's doing a big work and he's working with the uh, engineer design. So ready to go in two weeks. Another thing would be with the uh, with the fair. If the PA system up there needed upgraded, who would who would burn that re that that uh, financial is that the commissioners or does that fall back on the board? It all falls back on the fair board, but we all, we historically, and more so now than ever, have assisted the fair board with financial. I know when we had the Halloween thing up there, great feedback. Great yeah. feedback. Yeah. I agree. It was, it was great. I hope it gets better every year. Yes. Uh, one of the big things I did notice up there, though, that event, a lot of people complained about was PA system. You cannot understand what they're saying. Yeah, can you look at that? Sure, we can check into it. We would cost upgrade a PA system. And how they disperse, you know, if they want to split it. How you guys, you know. Typically, we work well with them, yeah. you know, on, on projects. On yeah. projects, and, and they, they shoulder some of the costs as we yeah. need. It's our, it's our property, so we yeah. want it to be as nice as possible. So. Sure. But they, they've always kicked in, too. Yeah. Um, so it's always been a, sort of a collaboration between the two of them. And like Daniel always said, I'd like to see the fair grow. I don't think we use it enough, but I think it sits down too much. And when it's sitting down and not being used, sometimes that can be hard on the upkeep. Uh, it'd be better if it was used more often. I know there's a big haunted hayride thing going on up there right now for this month. Seeing good feedback on that. There's some infrastructure challenges that we have there that we're trying to work through. They're going to be, as far as water and sewer go, they're going to be costly and uh, Require some planning and assistance by the state and federal government. And, uh, but first things first, we've been trying to address a lot of these buildings and get it up to par. I think we've done a lot. I think the fair board's done an outstanding job right yeah. now to attract the new business and allowing new business. And, and I, I agree. I want that to be a 365 facility. People will be in and out all day long, at night, walking, walking their dogs, jogging, running, utilizing the buildings, holding events there. We we all had sports federation meeting there last night in the Aztec building. So um, thanks to the board for that for making the building available. And yeah. we're gonna continue to grow. Oh, one other thing we're gonna do. Who owns this road right here north? North Park. Is that North City or is that a county? Sermon or North Park? North Park is right here on the corner it goes out to Big Mike's City on City Streets. Yeah, yeah that's that's city. Oh, okay. If it's, it's not a 
they paved it out there. And I, don't, I don't know why, but usually you kind of will tell me you pave the road, but you never cut it again. You don't pave it and then cut right in. That's stupid. And there's a spot up down by Big Mike's where they cut two trenches across the road. And it's beating the hell out of my car every time I come through there. There's low spots, there's high spots. Yeah. I don't know what they're doing. This has been going on for weeks. I think they ran new gas lines across the road. That's what they did. But that should have been done nice before they paved them. Yeah. It's like they're down there tearing up the sidewalks, too, after they paved. There's all this wear and tear on that fresh paint. Yeah. Yeah, they should coordinate. But well, you pay the road, you never want to cut it. Yes, but the city of Warren has no control over a private. They have to follow a process of permits and such, but they can't force them to say, hey, city of Warren, we're going to install gas lines now. It doesn't have to bring this line. So, but I agree. It's, <clears throat> just don't know the answer. How do you solve that? Check on that. The patchwork on there is I don't know why they haven't done a final. It seems like they're done, but it's, it's not a permanent. It's a quick patch. It's a horrible patch. I don't know they why they didn't soft cut it and make it nicer. Back to more city. I'll call the topics. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. 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 With that, I'll entertain a motion. Make motion to adjourn. Second. Yes. Yes. Yes.